Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. And if you are new, thanks so much for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. Yesterday I posted my top 10 fiction books of 2023 so far. And today I'm going to be sharing my top non-fiction books of 2023 so far. So if you are looking for some non-fiction for now or even uh, to plan for nonfiction November, then you have come to the right place. Um, I shared my reading stats in the fiction edition video, so I will leave a link to that video in the description box uh, if you are interested in my stats and my fiction reads. Out of the 68 books that I read from January to the end of June, 17 of them were nonfiction which is 25% of my overall reading so far this year. So I am going to count down my top six nonfiction books, starting with a recommendation that came from Nikki at Red Dot Reads. So in my number six spot, I have The Sun Does Shine by Anthony Ray Hinton. This is an incredible story about how Anthony Ray Hinton spent 30 years on death row for a crime that he didn't commit. At 29, he was arrested for murder. And because he was innocent, he just assumed that it would become obvious to everyone that he was innocent and that they would have to let him go. But things did not go that way. Um, one of the things that I found most inspiring in this story was the friendship with his childhood friend, Lester. Lester visited him every week for 30 years. It's incredible. And this is just a really good book too about the systemic racism in the justice system in the US and how Anthony Ray Hinton was able to keep his faith and his spirits alive behind bars. Um, I gave this book five stars because of the story. The writing isn't the best, it's not the worst either, but the story uh, more than makes up for that. Um, I talk more about this book in a pairing video that I did about people on death row uh, and books about that, so I will link that video below as well. At number five is another book that I talk about in that video, and it is linked to The Sun Does Shine as well. So the next book is Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. And as a lawyer, Brian Stevenson has helped many people on death row, including Anthony Ray Hinton. The main case that's throughout this book is the case of Walter McMillan. But the book also talks about the lack of resources and the prejudice that exists in the system. I, I thought this was a very well-written book. I learned a lot. Um, especially when it came to children on death row. Like, I had no idea. Um, and I find Brian and the work that he does to be very inspirational. Uh, there's also a movie out based on Just Mercy, which is really good as well. The next three books are all by Canadian authors, probably not a surprise. Um, at number four is The Skin We're In by Desmond Cole. I read this for the Reading Across Canada Challenge and for Black History Month this year. I loved the approach of this book. Each chapter is a month in the year 2017. Each month focused on events that actually happened that month. And it took on different themes like uh, police involvement and carding. This book definitely made me think it gave me a new perspective. Um, I think I think it's a really important book that all Canadians should, you know, definitely read, but it's certainly relevant for non-Canadians as well. Next up is another memoir. At number three is Permanent Astonishment by Thompson Highway. This book captured me from the first chapter. Thompson Highway is a Canadian icon and he has an incredible story. It still amazes me at how many Canadians don't actually know who he is. Uh, Thompson is two-spirit and was born the 11th of 12 children in Northern Manitoba. He is a residential school survivor and he is well known for his talent as a musician 
and a writer, a playwright. He is also a great storyteller, which I found out mostly by reading this book. The book starts before Thompson is even born and before colonization. So you get a real sense of life in the North and the love of the land and the importance of community and relationships. Thompson and his siblings attended a residential schools. And although Thompson doesn't really spend too much time, you know, dwelling on this, he is still honest about what happened there. Uh, the story ends when Thompson is still a teenager. So it really left me wanting to learn more. And I do have more of his books sitting on my shelf. So I will have to get to them uh, pretty soon. In the number two spot is another Indigenous memoir, Call Me Indian by Fred Sasakamoos. This is another book that I read for the Reading Across Canada Challenge. Uh, like Thompson Highway, Fred begins this story with his ancestors and what life was like before first contact with um, white people. He was born in Saskatchewan and he shares stories of his family and what happens when he and his siblings are taken away and forced to attend residential schools. Fred does share the abuse that he and others endured and he also shares about his love for hockey, which became an escape for him. Fred loved hockey and he was really good at it as well. And it became a home for him, a place uh, for him to belong. And he talks about the racism he experienced and how he found solace with other non-white players because eventually Fred makes it into the NHL and becomes an inspiration for others. And Fred talks about how his experience of trauma affected him and how intergenerational trauma affected his family. This is an excellent memoir and another book that uh, will stay with me for a very long time. Finally, in the number one spot is a book that I buddy read with Gemma from A Gem of Books. We read Know My Name by Chanel Miller, and I think both of us were impressed by the writing with this one. This is the story of how Chanel Miller, who was originally known as Emily Doe, uh, she takes back her identity after she was sexually assaulted by Brock Turner. I remember this story when it was in the news. It had a very high profile because Brock Turner was into sports, his family had money, and he was often portrayed as the victim. Chanel shares her story by telling what happened, what the trial was like, and how she, the actual victim, uh, was treated, and the effects that it had on Chanel, and how it was uh, perceived by the general population, the general society. And what I remember being most impressed by in reading this was how Chanel was able to show her own growth and understanding of what had happened and what was happening. I think that this is just another really important book to read. It really gives the perspective of how victims are treated and it is an excellent example of how this case made a difference. And that's thanks in large part to Chanel's bravery and her courage, especially in making her impact statement public. So although this is not an easy topic, the book I think is a must read. So these are my top six nonfiction books of 2023 so far. Please let me know what nonfiction books you've read this year and which ones make your top six. Um, also, as I said, I will leave my link to the fiction edition video below uh, with all of my stats, um, as well as any videos and playlists that I mentioned. Um, I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure.